You're listening to 834's award-winning podcast, The Happy Hour Hustle. We offer listeners the chance to experience the musings, or ramblings, depending on how many glasses of wine she's had, of the one and only Kimberly J. Bodie as she interviews notable clients, upstanding community members, and random passerby. Nominations and awards pending. Welcome, everyone, to another edition of Happy Hour Hustle, our award-winning podcast uh, featuring... 834's very own Rowan Leo and Kim Bodie. That's me. I'm Kim. Uh, <laughs> today we're talking about um, something that is near and dear to our hearts, social media, um, that also has become a topic, a national topic of conversation, uh, because everyone seems to feel the need to announce that they will no longer be on social media mm-hmm. or that they can live without social media, which um, being a digital agency, we think this is quite funny. Um, so, oh, Ro, before we start, um, because I don't think, have we asked you what your drink of choice is before on the podcast? I don't think on the podcast, no. Well, Um, this is a good reminder for everybody anyway. uh, I think my drink of choice is going to be a super, super sour beer. Um, Really? Like, what kind? I really like, um, sequench ale a lot. I mean, that's not super sour, but that's nice. I like that I know nothing about beer, but (laughs) sour just sounds terrible. I mean, but good choice. Good choice. <laughs> Thanks. There's no um, bad choices, right? <laughs> I mean, I've been dabbling a bit more with the vodka waters because supposedly those are better for you. But, you know, if you drink too many of them, you're still eating those pizza rolls anyway. So, um, all right. So one of the reasons this topic came up is because our favorite congresswoman um, announced most recently that she wasn't going to be using Twitter as much. And then we also had, there's another big brand that apparently everybody knew about but me. It's Lush. Lush, yeah. Lush Makeup. <laughs> that also announced that they were going to take a break from social media. So talk a little bit about um, why, first question, why can brands not escape social media? Okay. Um, So social media is one of those things that just kind of like... It's everywhere. Yeah, it's pervasive. Like no matter where you go, everybody is on social media. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm sure we all know somebody who's not, who's like... Josh. We (laughs) all know Josh. He's not on social media. Any platforms? None. What? He does have an Instagram account that he thinks doesn't exist because he doesn't use it. That's a whole nother topic of conversation, <laughs> but that's not how that works, everyone. Uh, in case there was confusion about yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so like individual personal people with their personal accounts can get away with not having social yeah. media. But brands, it's just so essential nowadays that like if you want to interact with a brand, you search for them on Google because pretty much everyone uses Google. And then you click on their Twitter account or their Facebook account or something like that. Like people are going to go to one of those accounts to interact with somebody instead of calling a helpline or a lot of times picking up like a chat bot. Like sometimes you'll do that, but at least for people that are in the lower age brackets, that's picking up a phone is like this big daunting thing. Nobody wants to use that. That's, that's like a panic attack waiting to happen. Absolutely. Um, So, and a lot of brands use it for customer service and that's the thing too. Like, you know, so Lush's whole point, um, that, which is a, that's a great brand name, um, a great name for a makeup brand. Um, but Lush's whole point was they felt like they were disconnected from their consumers or that they were spending too much time, you know, engrossed within social media. But social media is such a key tool for customer service that some would argue, like me, that you, that moving away from social media is actually disconnecting you from your, your customers. Yeah. So I would agree where Um, a lot of brands, when they want to interact with people, like they say that it's getting in the way of having that personal experience of like on social media, when somebody reaches out to you, that somehow it's not personal. That's so dumb and so backwards. (laughs) Like, yeah, put it bluntly. Like a lot of people feel so comfortable on their social media accounts that they forget that they are like public accounts. Yeah. So the fact that they think that those accounts aren't the best way to interact with somebody on a very personal level is, I mean... To me, that's baffling. Um, And for Lush, they were saying that they didn't want to fight with algorithms. Like, they didn't want to keep having to kind of struggle with showing up on people's news feeds or timelines or whatever it's called on whatever platform you're on. So they're sticking it to the man? Yeah, essentially. Mm -hmm. And this, we should specify, is just their UK, um, not the US version. Oh, yeah, so everybody calm down. Um, And we should specify that we know they make more than just makeup before Kim gets a million letters. Oh, Um, really? What else do they make? uh, Face wash. They make bath bombs is what they're super well known for. Yeah. Um, Cosmetics. Yeah, Whatever. I live and breathe lush. So. Self-care. Yes, <laughs> that word you super love. <laughs> I hate it. Um, but yeah, so these social media channels, I mean, people are social media natives. Like that is a term that you hear. So the concept of that putting a separate barrier between right. you is just so foreign. Well, and I mean, that's also where people go to complain. I mean, mm-hmm. so building on the customer service point, 
but that literally is where people go to complain. Like, you know, the other day I reached out to Hootsuite because they took a, a feature off their new dashboard, which is just was dumb of them. But anyway, so, and I reached out to them versus calling or using their help email or, or whatever to get a response that way. So if people are out there and they're going to be talking about your brand. And if you're not on social media, you can't monitor those conversations. You can't interact. And again, back to Lush real quickly, they do are they're doing a hashtag now, right? So they're just gonna Yeah, they're setting up a hashtag and they're gonna be interacting with people on that. But what's important to remember is that the people who are going to be speaking on behalf of Lush don't have those official accounts. Because Lush, I mean on Twitter we've all seen it with that little like blue check mark. Lush itself had those, but the people who are now responding to comments in that hashtag don't have them. So in theory, anybody could put in their profile, I work for Lush, and then respond to something, and there's really no fact-checking on it, right. aside from like calling Lush, which we which all is, established we don't want to do. That's a crisis management like, oh, yeah. waiting to happen. Mm -hmm. Like That's crazy. I didn't realize that until you said that. That's probably why you are the digital associate um, and not <laughs> me. But um, So going back to our favorite congresswoman, um, AOC did say that she was spending too much time kind of sucked into the Twitter rabbit hole, which I think is fair. Mm -hmm. But when you are in such a public position, um, I do think it's necessary that you are engaged, especially when you're dealing with constituents. And that's your that's their main way to communicate with you instead of having to dial a general number, write an email that's being checked by staffers. This is a way for us to reach those individuals in a, in a higher office. <laughs> one that shall remain unnamed, um, <laughs> on a very direct level. Uh, mm -hmm. So in a way, you're, you're, hurting, you're hurting yourself more than, more than anyone else. Oh, absolutely, especially in a publicly elected position like that. Like, the more of a personal interaction somebody can have with you, the more powerful that right. is. So taking yourself off of Facebook uh, and social media, especially when like, that whole campaign was really Facebook-driven in the first place, that's going to make this huge rift that wasn't there earlier in that campaign. And I think people are really going to feel that, that like, they can't right. have that personal connection. Well, and that's her whole brand, too. I mean, she, she has positioned herself as approachable and real. And, and then when, you know, by taking away that entire communication avenue, she's removing herself, you know, from her constituents. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I, we get it. We hate the algorithms here. Like, <laughs> we struggle with them. We think Facebook is a bunch of jerks um, because they're constantly changing, changing things and making it hard for, you know, content, to, harder for content to be seen. Mm -hmm. That being said... Um, you know, it is our job as a digital agency to find ways around that. Or, you know, if it is pay to play, it is pay to play, you know? So there's things that we do, you know, on our client side, um, you know, to, to ensure that, and there's things that Lush could have done as well. But I think what's important to remember as well, that if you're already out there engaging and then you remove that completely, um, that's damaging to your reputation. It's damaging to your customer service. Um, you know, it's it's and it's gonna it's gonna leave uh, consumers frustrated. Oh, incredibly. Um, I think if we're taking bets on it, I think Lush will within, I think six months. I bet they'll be back on yeah. all their social channels. I agree. I think it's gonna be one of those like big radical things like IHOB was, um, where they just immediately go, "Hey, this is a great idea," and then super quickly withdraw and say, oh, it was just, you know, a publicity stunt. Like, I don't know, it's it's, it's baffling to me. Like, I get um, AOC's stance, where yeah. the reason that she's pulling back is she says that social media is a mental health hazard. Fair. And that's fair, but that's a moment of how much exposure people have to social media yeah. and what they have exposure to. And if you are one of those brands that is pushing something uplifting or pushing something that has good news to it, then that's not necessarily damaging. Yeah. If anything, you should be more engaged yeah. so that you can drown out that other content. Yeah. And unfortunately, the trolls are always going to be out there. Oh, it's yeah. really how you just deal with them by blocking them, is what I would say. <laughs> no. Um, but I do think, I mean, you know, I get the mental health. People hide behind their, their computers. People, you know, they... they they find it a lot easier to, um, you know, instead of actually having a face-to-face -face conversation, it's a lot easier to insult somebody over, you know, through an uh, through a avatar or whatever. But mm -hmm. so I think 
I, I understand where she's coming from, but to your point, I think you just limit it. I think there's an opportunity for her to say, this is the times I'm going to be engaging. These are these are the times that, you know, you as my constituents can reach out to me. We can have a and a We can have, you know, whatever. And and I'm probably more or less um, referring to, to, to Twitter um, than anything else. But, I mean, Facebook, you know, doing a Facebook Live and things like that would be huge for her, too. I think, um, unfortunately, when you're in a position, such a visible position as hers and when she's taking a what many would say an unpopular, unpopular stance in certain issues, um, then, you know, there, there are going to be naysayers out there. So, um, but social media to the whole point of this podcast is social media is not going anywhere. Oh yeah. Uh, in fact, it'll continue to evolve and I'm sure become even more of our lives. And, you know, there is a mental health component to it, but there's also ways that you can engage without burning yourself out. Um, but more so to brands, you cannot escape social media. Yeah. It's, it's, Escaping, trying to escape, I will say, mm-hmm. social media is at this point more damaging than anything. Like yeah. you might, it might sound good to you. You might think maybe it cuts costs, maybe yeah. it helps uh, people to come into my store. But all it's going to do is have people talk about you behind your back, yeah. essentially, and you can't stand up for yourself. It's like then social media will become the mean girls of the world. <laughs> So, and you won't be able to engage or stop them. So all there's of, that. All of Twitter is just a burn book. Yeah, yeah. it really is. It is, yeah. actually. Yeah, that's a reference if anybody gets that. You could comment <laughs> on the on the podcast where that came from. That obscure um, Mean Girls reference that yeah, we named the, yeah, before. The, well, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, fair. <laughs> Dang it. Well, that's it. Now we're checking just to see if you're actually listening. But um, so this this podcast, by the way, is a follow up to um, a blog that that we wrote that dives a little bit more into this and explains how like Lush and AOC are, you know, how this is not going to work, um, and that you know, and and to, to what we were saying before, I guarantee they're going to be Lush will be back. Lush of UK um, will be back on. I'd say within like six months. Yeah, if it wasn't, then the U.S. branch also would have jumped off. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of weird that, yeah, the, only the U.K., like, interesting. Because mm-hmm. that also says we're not actually communicating as a full brand. Like, you know what I mean? We're yeah, segmented. Like, yeah, we're very segmented. So, um, well, thank you uh, for coming on the podcast and ranting and raving with me because that is why we wrote this blog. Because, you know, we have lots of things to say that maybe nobody cares about, but we're going to talk about <laughs> it anyway. So... Do you have any last parting thoughts on social media that you want to share, Ro? I guess just a moment of, like, if you learn how to play in social media's game, like, if you learn how to reach out to people that way, it can be a super great tool, um, but the more afraid of it you are, the more damaging it's going to be. And you don't have to do it alone. That is why we exist. So Mm -hmm. we will take your mental health concerns, and we'll just put them on our shoulders, and then we'll be really stressed out. (laughs) All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in uh, to Happy Hour Hustle. Uh, We love your ideas and feedback, so please make sure you're engaging with us on social media. good? Did we finish it?